Okay, so we have about 15 minutes uh, to discuss about three hours worth of content. So I'm gonna go full on auctioneer on you um, and go through a bunch of these slides really quick. They'll be up on SlideShare, so they'll be available. You can take a look at it, but there's a lot of information I wanna cover. Um, I'm Jack Gudenkoff. I'm a senior architect with uh, HPE, Big Data Services. That's a long way to say that uh, I'm a consultant. Um, so I help you with uh, everything to do in and around big data, structured streaming, Hadoop, uh, Vertica, et cetera. Uh, so what we're gonna talk about is Spark structured streaming for columnar data warehouses, and in particular, our solution. Our solution's based on an architecture that I've been talking about for a couple years at various conferences. Uh, it's called par uh, Parallel Streaming Transfer Transformation Loader, uh, PSTL. And for the, uh, this application, it's a Spark application that's always continuously running. Um, and we'll talk about some of the benefits, features, architecture, and then we're gonna try to get right into seeing some code. How about that, yeah? Um, so some of the benefits are obviously um, analysts spending 80% of their time uh, transforming the data, reshaping their data, et cetera, um, is not where you wanna spend your time, right? Um, you wanna spend 20% you know, of your time doing that and actually um, doing analytics over your data. So I think we have a little bit of a formatting problem. So some of the features of our autonomous application are that it removes all the DevOps complexities of writing custom code, Spark applications yourself. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of blow through these slides since in the interest of time. Um, we basically provide all the necessary glue that you would need if you were writing your own Spark uh, structured streaming application. Um, if you think about it, by the time you architect, design, uh, develop, code, test, et cetera, uh, we probably have about two years into this solution. Um, so we can save you two years. Um, it's a no-code needed solution. It's all self-service, uh, which we'll take a look at here shortly. And it's highly customizable, so you can extend it. Uh, developers can extend it, et cetera. Um, so what does that look like? Um, so our model is uh, very typical in borrowing the same kind of concepts that you would uh, here from uh, writing Spark applications themselves. So we think of things as sources. So in a streaming world, you have you know, producers producing Kafka messages, maybe through REST API or natively, uh, pushing messages onto Kafka to various topics. You know, the raw data is in JSON, Avro, maybe protobuf, delimited. It's a byte array at the end of the day, right? Um, we support uh, loading sources from Kafka, from HDFS. Maybe you're loading data from HDFS uh, or through JDBC connector from external sources. Um, so we can kind of merge streaming data with uh, semi-static data being loaded uh, periodically, uh, which you might want to do to say, do some transformations join to the streaming data as it's ingested before it goes into your data warehouse. Um, our solution's built on uh, Spark SQL, so if you can write SQL, uh, you can write uh, uh, ETL jobs in, in our application. Um, we use some uh, very high performance uh, equivalents of like user-defined functions called catalyst expressions, which I'm gonna talk about here in a minute. And of course, syncs uh, to data at rest. We support syncs to writing uh, data through the pipeline into Vertica, into Hive, you know, or Parquet uh, format, columnar formats, obviously. Uh, if you have time series aggregate data, you can write through OpenTSDB into HBase, uh, and you can also sync back onto Kafka as well. So maybe you're ingesting the data, in, you know, raw data uh, in JSON and Avro, apply some transformations, maybe a user-defined function, some callout, and then you might want to push that back onto a new Kafka topic, and then from there into, say, Vertica, for instance. Um, so uh, basically, how does this work? So I'll let you guys look at this kind of briefly uh, before I jump into this. Uh, this is literally all you have to do to get a job up and running in, in, in our application in Spark. So let's kind of break this down a little bit. So each job is a simple configuration file. You define the sources, you define the transforms, the transforms are in Spark SQL, and you define the syncs where you want to write this data to, okay? So kind of straightforward in this case, uh, our source is Kafka, right? We're reading from Kafka topics. Uh, we're creating a logical name called log, so we just create a temporary view on your behalf. So uh, as you're reading this data from you know, streaming sources like Kafka or maybe some static sources as well from HDFS, um, you can then write these transforms uh, to, in this case, what we're doing is uh, obviously the data that's coming off of Kafka, if you're familiar, oops, sorry, back. Uh, 
in Kafka, you have key and a value, right? It's a byte array at the end of the day. It's some probably encoded data. In this case, we're showing an example that it's actually a string, delimited string. Um, so in our first transform, uh, what we're doing here is we're uh, converting that value, that byte array, to a string, and then we're splitting on that string because it's vertical bar delimited you know, messages, for instance, right? And then that creates a view, and then we can read from that view and then select out those columns. Try to get it in the shape of you know, the target system, like in the case of Vertica tables, right? So you're picking out these columns out of the, out of the stream. Um, one thing that we're showing here is vhash. Uh, anybody in the audience using Vertica right now at all? Anybody, we got, yeah, a couple people, okay, cool. So you know the hash function in Vertica that allows you to have an even distribution of data across your cluster? Um, that's done through uh, vhash. So one of the things we did was lift that up as a catalyst expression. Uh, that's a fancy word to say it's a, by the way, this isn't documented very well in Spark. Uh, in fact, unless you read the source code, it's not documented at all. Um, but it's a, a fancy way to say it's very highly optimized, so we brought up that hash expression up into Spark. The nice thing is you can do things like, say I can hash over all the columns of the data, the message that I'm bringing in, and that's gonna give me a unique identifier, and you could use that to like dedupe your data, right? So get rid of your duplicates before they go into Vertica. Not a bad idea, right? Um, other things you can do are, if you, rather than having dimensional data where you have uh, a surrogate key that you're creating, so how many people are using dimensional data and you're creating surrogate keys, auto increments, and things of that nature? Instead, why don't you use a hash? It's a unique identifier of your natural key, and that way, through your streaming ingest, you don't have to uh, do joins across those. So some of the additional transforms that we uh, support are catalyst expressions, are F protobuf, which is from protobuf. So if your messages on the Kafka are protobuf, uh, or Avro format, or Confluence uh, Avro format, um, if you're, anybody here is using Confluence version of Kafka or JSON, uh, we supply these uh, handy functions that allow you to convert from the protobuf message or the Avro message, so you don't have to write the deserialization of the message. It's just simply a catalyst expression, and we'll see an example of that here in a minute. Um, we have some other ones that I'll talk about, like try, of course, you could, uh, here's an example of the vhash from Vertica that we lifted up, and of course, Hive UDFs you could you know, just uh, apply here as well. So some of the syncs that we support, in addition to Vertica, as you see here, um, are Kafka, S3, HDFS, uh, or Parquet file format, you know, typical stuff you can do with Spark, obviously. Uh, open TSDB for time series aggregate data, uh, or to the console for debugging. Um, which the thing that you kind of notice here is that the source for, these are typical, if you've written a Kafka consumer or producer, right, these are your typical options, your bootstrap, you know, uh, servers, what is the topic. You can add additional options that are anything available to say Kafka, and we'll inherit those, right? And the same thing with Vertica. You can see we're reading from this uh, URL on this table with these, you know, user ID and password. It doesn't have to be user ID and password if you're using Kerberos, right? But just as an example here. Um, you could add additional options that you would on any Vertica copy command if you're going into Vertica. Uh, and then you can see here where basically uh, the sync is kind of pulling on uh, the final output of the transforms. Is this kind of making sense? So you're reading from sources, you know, you're doing transforms over there with SQL, and then you're writing to some target store, right? Notice I haven't written a line of code. No bash scripts, no cron jobs, no Java applications. This is it. This is literally, so what does that look like for, for the end user or for somebody uh, deploying jobs? Literally, we have our own job uh, deployment and our own job um, management for submitting jobs. Uh, you can see here, I just give it an initial contact of some host name. Uh, we use uh, Akka uh, clustering for uh, managing jobs. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Akka. We could talk about that at some point. Um, and you just say start this job and you pass the, this config file. This config file basically is Hocon, it's JSON, uh, right? So this is it. This is literally a full end-to-end -end streaming job writing into Vertica. No lines of code really written other than some, some SQL. Um, yes, you could do it in Spark, but try to get that job to run and monitoring, metric, you know, uh, alerting, et cetera, is, takes a bit of work. So how do we do that? Um, this config file for us is, it's a, it's a job DAG, right? It's a, a directed uh, silic uh, graph. Um, so the source, in this case, is Kafka. Uh, the transforms we're applying is standard Spark, uh, Spark structured streaming, Spark SQL, okay? Uh, and then the syncs, like in this case, you could have multiple syncs. So maybe you're writing to Hadoop, one of the transforms. Maybe you're writing to Vertica in the other transform. Um, 
One of the nice things that we manage for you is it's all done concurrently. So uh, if one of the sinks fails, what we will do is we have circuit breakers that'll do exponential back off and keep retrying. So we're not gonna just keep you know, trying to hit JDBC to like write to Vertica over and over again. We don't have a serial dependency on writing to Hadoop first into Vertica. It's all run concurrently and independently and we manage uh, that entire uh, job DAG for you. So you don't have to reason about that if you have multiple sinks. Um, so uh, we have a, a set of uh, transforms uh, kind of in the library, you know, it's in, in a jar uh, that you can use in say the Spark shell, if you're writing some code, right? Let's say that um, you're reading off of Kafka in the Spark shell and um, uh, you wanna have a user defined function or something like that or some available uh, catalyst expression that we have. Um, you know, you can obviously write Spark SQL outside of outside of writing these jobs as well. Um, here's an example, um, this throw on odd is just a, uh, what I did was just a silly little hive user defined function. Every time that it gets a, an odd number, it throws an exception, right? So let's say you wrote some user defined function and it you know, caused an exception or you're uh, parsing protobuf or something like that and they, they broke the schema, like that never happens. I used to work at Twitter, it happened like every day. Um, so, one of the difficult things when you're working with SQL and set-based logic, the good news is it works on sets, right? The bad news is it works on sets, which means that if one of the rows is bad or you're validating one of the rows, you invalidate the whole set, right? So that's kind of a hard problem unless you're cursoring over the data. So we have a built-in function called try, and you can see I've wrapped this around my own user defined function. So every time I get an odd number, in this case Kafka offsets, I throw an exception, our try will catch that, okay? And then you can uh, reason about, the, oops, sorry. Then you can reason about that as another temporary view. So the try, uh, in this case, it's returning a try result, right? And it's basically like a struct. And we give you some ad additional attributes on, on that. So we can say for this other secondary transform, uh, only select records where it was successful, where I didn't get an exception, right? So I can say, give me all the records that were good, write those to Vertica. All the ones that failed, that caught an exception, maybe put those on Kafka or something like that, right? So they don't go in to pollute our database. We can get metrics on uh, those bad rows in, uh, in, in Kafka, for instance. Um, so this is a very typical kind of, you know, I'm just pulling out the topic, the partition, the offset, you know, the columns, you know, from, from the stream off of Kafka. So you guys, you're pretty familiar with like reading from Kafka? So, okay, so this makes sense, right? Um, so clearly we just give you some nice uh, sort of helper functions for catching exceptions from user-defined functions and things like that. They're actually catalyst expressions, so they're very, uh, very performant. Um, so, you know, as I like to say, keep bad data out of your database, right? So this is one way to do that, to catch exceptions. Okay, so kind of looking at a little more, um, kind of one last example, and hopefully we'll have time for a few questions. Um, one catalyst expression that I mentioned was from Avro. Um, and what we're doing is giving it a schema, and the value here is uh, obviously the value from Kafka, right? And key values, right? it's a byte array. But you don't have to write the deserialization here. Just give us the schema. Now this could be a URI, I just gave you the actual schema embedded here. Um, it's pretty handy to have some of these additional functions to say take this and convert it from Avro. Uh, we have additional uh, ones to go to Avro. So if you're writing Spark code, we will take a data frame and uh, you can convert that to Avro so that you can be a producer of Kafka, right? Because sometimes we'll read messages off of Kafka, say in Protobuf, uh, we do some transformations, obviously in Spark SQL, and then you can say, oh, I wanna now write that back onto Kafka as Avro, right? So we have these catalyst expressions to go to Avro. So, Pretty, pretty easy, does that make sense? Is this making sense for you guys, how you kind of build this stuff? Notice, I'm not writing a line of code to actually get this job into production. That's it. So we'll be at booth uh, 403, the Vertica booth. Uh, we'll talk about a few other things. I'll put this up on my slide share. Some things that I didn't really have time to talk about, unfortunately, due to uh, 30 seconds left. Uh, are things like, because this is a single application, Spark application, we instrument it with thousands of metrics. Uh, that'll give you like, every, this is just Grafana on top of some metrics that we expose through like JMX and we use Prometheus and a few other things for metrics gathering. Uh, but you can see through the entire data pipeline 
how long it took to read messages, how long it took to write messages, how long it took, or how many rows you wrote to the, to the sync. Um, so it's, it's really nice to be able to put some metrics and measures around all these. Uh, and then we didn't get to this, but if you're just writing, um, if you're writing Spark code and you want to take advantage of some of our stuff like to Avro and from Avro, et cetera, just from data frames, this is pretty powerful stuff. So time, right on the, right on the money. Perfect. Well, come on, that's got to be something. Yeah, give it up for him. <laughs> that is impressive. <laughs> So I don't know if we have time for questions or not. We, the, the other guy went over a little, maybe, yes, sort of. Yeah, we could do one or okay. two. OK, um, any, just any questions? Does that kind of resonate? I'll put this up on my slide share as well, so you, know, you can look at this later. But the long and st short of it is when you, you know, when you want to write Spark streaming jobs, we can do that with a simple code declaration like this. Yeah. All right, I'll run back to you just so we can get your question on and so we can hear you, obviously. So do you do batch write to uh, Vertica? Sorry? Do you batch write to Vertica? So it's, PSTL is always uh, reading micro batches off of, in the case of, of Kafka. Um, so we'll process micro batches um, using uh, Spark structured streaming. And those are basically written uh, from Kafka directly to Vertica uh, using whatever parser you want, like Avro parser. So they're micro batches is the short answer. Yeah, one more question. Can you do real-time analytics on the way? Say, calculate a counter or do some window functions, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we do support, so the question was, do we support some general uh, Spark structured streaming uh, in addition to uh, uh, immutable data sets of da uh, data frames, et cetera? Yes, is the answer. So we support, like, uh, windowing over, et cetera. Um, yep. Does that answer your question? I think that was your, yeah. So we'll, we'll execute anything that is pretty much valid. Uh, Spark SQL is the answer, short answer. OK, great question. Did we have any more questions? I think we have time for one. Cool. Okay. Can you guys use this? Yeah, makes your life easier. Yeah, sort of, yeah, OK. <laughs> right. Fair enough. OK, thanks a lot, Jack. <laughs> Thank you. Let's give it up for Jack. Jack's going to be going back down to L.A., Santa Monica, and I, I told him I'm jealous. Yeah. And I'm also doing stand-up comedy at the hotel down the street <laughs> if you, uh, you want to come see me there. Or Vertica booth downstairs if you want guys to have any more questions about ingesting to column stores. Yeah. Thank you, okay. by the way.